big hey hi and hello there from me to you welcome back to minecraft amplified we're in part 21 or something so forth doesn't matter you'll know what it's you know what part it is even though it doesn't even matter in the descriptiones in the title of the video so last time I, I got it done man I accomplished it really means nothing but it's a good accomplishment I got the bed right here and it was a nice epic journey and I got it and then I ranted a little about my life and what's going on and we'll see what happens you know my folks are being good to me and I really feel like this time around I am really getting that maturity and that responsibility thing down because I feel like I was my the development of my brain was arrested when I was 14 years old due to a head injury I sustained and I thought wouldn't it be fun if I took this time while I'm doing menial tasks in the world of Minecraft to tell you said story so that you get a greater was that a skeleton uh, a zombie what was that anyway I thought I'd give you a greater insight as to what happened because I'm almost 31 years old okay so 17 years it has been since this happened almost to the day and I don't remember the exact date but <clears throat> I will tell you the story of the head injury that may have caused serious trauma to my brain and arrested my mental development which is why I still think like a 14 year old when it comes to matters of responsibility and life and, and obligations and kids and all that stuff relationships everything so <clears throat> it's story time have a seat everybody and listen to Sor's life but I think this is the event that really, really nailed it down because it's something real, it's something tangible that you can say, yeah, that does, and it, it's happened to other people, and you can say, yeah, this really happens, and it's a, it's a real thing. <clears throat> so, and I'm going to take a nap too. So when I was 14, right after I turned 14, which in the United States, at least in Pennsylvania, you are legally old enough to acquire work. There are certain things you can't do, like work with knives, like in a kitchen, uh, or be, you know, but there are things you can do. <clears throat> so, my grandfather found an ad in the newspaper for a job peddling newspapers. Now, saying that now, it just makes you laugh. Like, are you serious, man? You found a, a, an, an ad in the paper about selling papers? As, and it wasn't even the same paper. But that's, that's how it went. He came to me. And my dad, he showed it to my dad, and they thought, hey, this is a great idea. He's 14. Let's teach him some responsibility and some, some value. Because they, they were giving me allowance for different chores. But it was time for me to go to work. It's time for Sorv to have a job. My first job. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> no. It didn't work out that way. Because I called the guy. What it was is this guy would drive around in his, his big van and pick all the guys, like five of us guys. He'd pick us all up and then take us to a location, a street. And we would get out our big bag with the papers in it. We weren't delivering newspapers. We were handing out free copies of that day's paper to people to try to get them to sign up for a 13-week trial offer. And they would get the paper delivered for 13 weeks at no obligation. All they had to do was fill out our little form and they would start getting delivery and we would get paid for every order that was filled successfully it was like three bucks an order or something so naturally you're working for your monies so you're not getting paid hourly it's all commission based so the more well maybe we were getting paid hourly I don't know but anyway <clears throat> the more orders you got the more money you made now <clears throat> the first day that I was there the owner uh, started to have a conversation with us and he started using swear words and the f-bomb and he said I'm sorry if you don't like my language this isn't the place for you to be now I am a good little Christian boy raised in the assembly of God and I now belong to uh, the Baptist Church which doesn't really mean anything other than uh, you know I, I was raised Christian I believe Lord Jesus Christ my Savior I have that upbringing so when he said that in that van, my response should have been, I'm sorry, I don't agree with, you know, the language that you use. I'm a Christian. I don't think this is the place for me to be. That's what should have happened. But at that time, this is just prior to me being bullied a lot in junior high school, 7th grade. So now I'm a freshman in high school, and public school is going to ruin you anyway. This wasn't the only deciding factor. 
But they got me this job, and I felt that if I got this job and said, no, I'm sorry, because of that reason, that it would, it would seem strange. And they would say, well, you know, we understand, but you should have kept the job because we feel that you should have a job and be responsible. And I just realized, I have no leather! So all of this is for naught, but I will, I will allow it to continue to grow. So, I, I, so that was it right there. Because I, I joined in and I would talk like them and act like them and just be, you know, worldly is the term. And it looks like I gotta go cow tipping. Alright, here we go. So that's how that happened. And that's not the reason that I that I had this head injury. I'm just setting the stage for you so you understand what I was doing. A 14-year-old kid walking door to door, knocking on people's doors, asking them if they want to buy the newspaper. And I would get all kinds of people, you know, this is solicitation, that's a scab paper. they go to the door, that's a scab paper! I'd never wipe my ass with that paper! This is the kind of stuff people would say to me. And that was the nice things. Not everybody, I got orders, but still. So we gotta go t cow tipping. I'm gonna explore this other area where I found the, the sheep that seems to be working. So what happened was, about a year into this, uh about 17 years ago in in January February because it was snowing outside and we were in some area peddling the papers and uh, we're horsing around and everything and somebody came up behind me that wasn't even working with us it was a friend of one of the guys I worked with and he came up behind me and he grabbed my shoulders from behind like like this and lifted me off the ground and threw me back like a body slam like you see in wrestling where they grab him and they Hurra, boom power power bomb power slam on my head boom on my head are you saying holy crap so that really happened yeah it happened problem is I didn't go to the hospital I was knocked out for 30 minutes can't I have no recollection of that I remember getting grabbed and lifted up and the next thing I know I'm waking up in the van because they're getting me out and putting me into my mother's car to be taken up up the driveway to the house it took 30 minutes for them to get me. It was knocked out cold. 30 minutes for them to get me, get me in a van, drive me back to the house, and then go back in. And I just kind of remember going into my bed and, you know, drinking some water and just being in kind of a daze. But I was knocked out. And they said I was in the van, like, kind of like, oh, what happened? Like, say, what happened over and over, like, just kind of out of it. But I was gone, man. I was out for 30 minutes. Now, if you study this this phenomenon about concussions, and you those no, those are horses. Darn it! Why are there no? Okay, when you study this, and you do a little research about concussions, and you see it all the time, like professional sports. American football is notorious for for concussions. That's why they have rules about helmet to helmet contact. Well, if you study this, you realize that. If you just slap yourself in the head like this, you actually give yourself a concussion. It's a shock to the cranium, but it's not as severe as if you get knocked out cold for 30 minutes. Like, lifeless for 30 minutes. And like I said, I don't remember this. This is what I was told. And because I don't remember, it's obvious that I was not awake. Because you don't remember when you go to sleep, you don't remember falling asleep, all you remember is you're laying down, and then maybe you have a dream, and then you wake up, or you become aware. So all that time, seven, eight hours goes by, but when you're knocked out, it causes serious trauma to the brain. And if it's true, which it is, because it happened, and I can verify it by many people, but I did not get it treated, I did not go to the hospital. I should have, but I didn't. That's on my folks. But whatever. So I really believe that at that moment, it, it knocked something loose in my head that didn't heal right. Because if you study this, you say, well, concussions really mess people up. And that's not the only head injury I've sustained. But I believe that because of that event, I... I got stuck like that. It's the same thing as, as kids that start using drugs at 12, 13, 14 years old. It's known fact in the scientific and the psychiatric community that they have a, it's called arrested psychological development. And whenever you start doing drugs, 
is where your brain stops developing. Because in a normal brain, it develops into adulthood and you mature and, you know, you are able to handle regular situations. And I, I've, I've come a long way since then, but I'm still stuck in that mindset like a 14-year-old guy. I, I, I still am like that because I'm terrible with money and responsibility and, and raising a kids. I can't commit. I have all of the symptoms of somebody who is that age. And I feel like that is why this happened because of that head injury. So, and what do you do? What do you do about something like that? I mean, I, I'm in counseling now, but it's because I had to go into rehab because I got hooked on prescription pain medication. I was self-medicating, and it's not the first time that's happened, but it was the one that became the most apparent. So, I'm okay now. I'm not on anything. I, I got the help for that, at least. and I, You know, my folks are helping me out, but that's why I'm stuck. I've been I've had to live with my parents three, four times since I moved out at age 19, and I didn't even move out then. I ran away. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And again, all that behavior is right in line with somebody who is a teenager, 14-year-old person. That's that's what they would do. They wouldn't try to get a work and, and get an apartment and, and handle their business. They just, you know, dry, run on impulse and, and emotion, and they don't have a lot of rational thinking ability. Because by age 17, man, I was a wreck. I'd be on medication for anxiety, depression, and focus problems, and disorder. You know, this, this, my mind just deteriorated. And I really believe it was because of that head injury. So, I've gone on long enough about that. Tell me what you think. And uh, we're going to try to get to the bottom of this. It helps to talk about it. But I know... Oh, there's an abandoned mine. Excellent. So let's check that out in the next video. So you stay awesome. Don't worry about me. I'm going to work things out. But in the meantime, I'm going to make these YouTube videos to entertain you guys because it's all I got right now. So thank you very so much for watching. And I will munch on my potatoes and I will see you in the next video. You stay awesome. And oh.